Welcome to GameStub. I'm Josh. And I'm Will. And we're here around Halloween time, as you can probably tell from our little atmosphere change. What are we here to talk about for Halloween? Well, it's not a game. We're going to talk about some stories. Some... Gaming stories. Oh yeah. Um, creepy stories. You know about uh, creepy pastas. Yeah. That's what these are. They're we're gonna tell you about ten of the creepiest, just creepy pastas we know about. Yep. And if you really don't know about creepy pastas, they're really a love or hate thing. Mm -hmm. Like these stories, they're all fan fiction pretty much and just you can't really look at them as real as like novelty written stories the best way to look at it is they're B movies yeah. pretty much <laughs> yeah and uh I think you know um, these are the ones that I mean they're popular and you may have heard them before yeah. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna spoil like the stories for you. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna like read it, read the story play by play. We're just gonna give a our brief interpretation of the story. Hopefully, not spoil too much, but I'm sure some yeah, stuff is some stuff. But we're not gonna read the story to you. Uh, we'll leave it to you to look up these stories and, and well there'll be a, they'll, I'll I'll put a link in the description yeah. to someone on YouTube that I find that reads the story rather well yeah and um it's up to you if you want to read them or not or listen to them but we're just gonna give you the top ten that we've come up with starting with number one we are gonna talk about the Sonic.exe. It's probably the most heard of out of all of them, almost. And it's honestly nothing great. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much what made this creepypasta popular was a ROM hack someone made. Mm hmm. Yeah, after the story was written and people read it someone made a fan game for it yeah uh called sonic D dot exe and you can play it um most notably like pewdiepie played it right and um it's um, all right but the story is i don't remember the guy's friend's name but the main character's guy's name is tom he receives a disc well, that says Sonic.exe on it from, and a letter from one of his friends he have not seen in a while and the letter reads from his friend just saying that get rid of this disc throw it away don't even play it I think he's after me and at that point you only assume it's Sonic of course yeah but Tom, being the typical B-movie idiot, <laughs> plays the game anyways, and, well, pretty much the story kind of explains as he, as he progresses through each level, mm -hmm. kind of overusing the word blood, but, or bloody, and just, there's a lot of bloody... Yeah, it, it's a... <laughs> It's a gory, um, creepypasta more than anything. Yeah, then, basically, and what you get out of it, if you get to the end, is you get kind of a nice, kind of gory title card, or not title card, but end card of the yeah. game, of Sonic's face, and then after that, the game over screen has, like, well, let's just say... The three characters you can play as in the game are all kind of, yeah. They're all impaled, like yeah. Vlad the Impaler style. <laughs> right. 
But yeah, I think yeah, without the ROM hack game, I don't think that Creepypasta would be nearly as popular as it is because it's not necessarily written well. No, it's not. And it's the story is eh. Yeah, right. Too. I mean, compared to what else we have on this list, it, the story's eh. But, I mean, it's if you want to check it out, I mean, it's worth it. Right, I mean... Just search it up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Continuing on down the list, and which, by the way, there's not really any obscure type creepypastas on this list. These are more popular, so if you're a creepypasta fan and you're watching this, you probably already had heard what's going to be coming up yeah. on our list. Mm -hmm. Number two, and that is probably one of the more uh, popular ones for, for now. Or, uh, at least recently, was uh, Herobrine from Minecraft. Yeah. And, like, I mean, it's not written really well. There is not really hardly any story to this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, like, player accounts of, like, seeing this yeah. uh, character model in the game with his uh, signature white eyes. Yeah, basically the character model is what you start as as Minecraft, except you have empty white eyes. Yeah, and uh, basically as the legend or s story goes is as you play in the game, he's constantly following you. Yeah. Uh, like if you turn around quick he'll, he'll be there and uh, he runs around like shaving trees and uh, digging two two block tall holes in the ground and just watching you constantly um, but I, the what's that I'd also like to add that to add to the story as this problem this well, this woulda gave Hero Brian a little bit more depth, but people have speculated that it that Hero Brian got got ended up being made from being the being the ghost of um, Notch's dead brother. brother. Yeah, dead brother. But he but Notch uh, turned down that claim. So yeah, um, his claim was. Uh, I don't have any, you know, dead yeah. brothers. I have a half brother I've never met. Right. Um, but it's an interesting one. Um, only, mostly to the fact that Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, uh, knew about this. Right. And um, they knew that players were talking about this Herobrine, and they put it in um, the developer. Um, like the developer news or um, update news that uh, Herobrine was removed. Yeah, and which was kind of funny, just yeah. just a little humor. It was something like they acknowledged it, <laughs> and because um, that's what the big patch was all about <laughs> to remove Herobrine. <laughs> um, but. It, the Herobrine model never existed in the game. Uh, it, it's not actually there. But it was it was nice to see that Mojang acknowledged it and played along with the, yeah. with the creepy story going along. Alright, number three. This evolves around a... Was it an arcade or Atari game? Uh, it was an, it was an, well, it was an arcade game, I think, made okay. by Atari. Okay, well, it's called Berserk. Yes. And the game name itself, it really has nothing to do much, much with the actual, well, it has to do more with the enemy you have in the game, mm -hmm. which was, what was it, it, was that his actual, was, was Otto his actual name or nickname given to him? I think Otto was the nickname given to him. Anyways, yeah, there's this 
enemy that's like this smiley face. Yeah, it's like a... Just a yellow... Looks like a yellow smiley face. Yeah. And it bounces around the screen. Until it eventually follows you and tracks you down and kills you. Right, and... Pretty much, they named that enemy Otto. Well... <laughs> That's not the interesting interesting part of this. The interesting part is that all the players that gained like the high score on this mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a specific machine or just random gameplay, but they ended up dying shortly after they got the high score. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. That's the creepy part of this of the whole story. Yeah. Um, and a little side fact is uh, Otto, the enemy Otto, is uh, attributed to being one of the first like scariest enemies. Yeah, which is kind of funny actually. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it's all attributed to um, the fact that he kills you with a smile plastered on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty creepy in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> the number four story on our list is Polybius, which is an arcade machine that was... It's a supposed arcade machine that we don't really know if it ever really existed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's said to have had a few scattered around Portland, Oregon in uh, like yeah. 1981. Right. Um, but what it was, was it was just a simple like puzzle shooter. Yeah, by the way, there it, we don't know if it's real because there nothing has shown up on the internet ROM or emulated ROM wise or anything of this particular game. So. Yeah. But there, I think there is now. There may be hacks, but... Yeah, I think there's hacks of it. And people have made, like, arcade machines to look like what they what it would have looked like. Right. As the story goes, is it's just like a simple arcade shooter, but all the players who played this got, uh, got physical ailments. Like, um, n amnesia and nausea and night terrors and just bad dreams and nightmares and everything and uh like really messed them up mentally yeah and uh as the story goes on uh there's like a bunch of reported accounts of men in black suits coming and like gathering data yeah from this machine so basically, it's kind of like, it's almost like it was something kind of machine that like alters a, your brain in some way. That yeah. That takes, I don't know, no one knows what kind of data they would have been trying to receive. Yeah. All the story says is that it has been seen that men in black have been mm -hmm. walking to the machine to take data from it. Yeah, and it's kind of played off as like a big government experiment. Yeah. And, um, it was, I think there was news back then about it. Like, people talking on the news about it. Um. Could very well be. I, th I think there's, there was old footage of that. Um, but other than that, no one really knows if it was really true or not. Yeah. Um. And that's the great thing about these creepypastas. I mean. Yes. Some of them are based on a little tiny bit of truth, actually, though, so... Yeah, some of them, I mean, they may really get up under your skin because you don't know if they were real or not. We put number five on the list because I came across a creepypasta being read by that same YouTuber, N No Ordinary Gamer. Um, I believe um, the... Creepypasta was called Pokemon Channel. It had to do with the game Hey You Pikachu. The premise of the story is that this boy, I don't remember the name of the main character, but um, this boy, he played 
Hey you Pikachu, and he loved the game. Played it for months straight for like two years or something like that. Then all of a sudden he just kind of moved away, slowly moved away from the game and continue on with other games and about 10 years have passed and he comes across his old game system and sees Hey You Pikachu and then decides to run it to load it back up and then it starts it started up fine and stuff but then once he entered a game something strange was going on Pikachu was not acting like himself Pikachu was acting depressed, kind of angry towards the player, until, yeah, he, and over the time, they just kept on, the writer just kept on adding to that, and just made you kind of feel sorry for Pikachu, mm-hmm. because they added feeling to this Pikachu character, to where th- the Pikachu feel like it had been abandoned, yeah. And such. And just, even though it was, like, hostile, mm-hmm. you still felt for it. And that's oh, yeah. kind of awesome. Until they kind of ruined it at the end when they took the, kind of the realistic from Because at the end, I don't remember exactly what caused it to happen, but... Uh, Pikachu plushie appeared out of nowhere behind the player and... That's how it ended. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they kind of ruined it with that. But, I mean, up until that point, they really had, like, character development for yeah. this. It's it's a well, like, it's a really cool concept uh, to start off with that, like, this game has emotion. Yeah. And, and it's like this game is like a living thing. Yeah. Um, that's a really awesome and you know, creepy aspect for people.